Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2022 Panini Capstone Baseball 8 box, half case, random team break number three. One spot gets you two teams and all cards ship. So big thanks to these three right here, Raymond, Austin, and Steve. We'll double you up like Sir Mix-a-Lot. Uh, double up. Uh, uh. And there are the teams right there. Let's roll it. Let's randomize names and teams. Six and a three, nine times each. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Got a few Steves down to Steve. Six and a three, nine times for the teams. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And ninth and final time. All right. So, well, let's kind of, let's kind of do it this way. Steve, you've got the Red Sox, Marlins, Nationals, Angels, Rangers, Padres, Diamondbacks, Tigers. Mets, Blue Jays, White Sox, Yankees, Guardians, Giants, A's, Orioles, Royals, Twins, Pirates, and Braves. Raymond, you've got the Rockies, Reds, Dodgers, Cardinals, Brewers, Phillies, Rays, and Mariners. And Austin, you got the Astros and the Cubs. All right, let's sort alphabetically by team. We're going to pause the video. When we come back, we're going to see if there's any trades. Then we'll have the break. Stick around. Be right back. All right, welcome back, everybody. No deals were done. We just learned during the trade window that, that uh, Taft, President Taft, was the last president with a mustache. And he had a pretty impressive one, too. I think all presidents have been clean shaven since. And I suppose if Taft sets that tone... Taft sets that tone, and that, I guess that, that, that's it. All right, Capstone, 16-box case. Where's my knife? We're going to pop this baby open and see which eight boxes we're going to do here. Yeah, Teddy Roosevelt did rock some good facial hair. He was before Taft, though, wasn't he? going to take the top eight boxes right off the top right here. Just do it that way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. The other eight, <clears throat> eight, excuse me, we'll save for next time. So we got that squared away. All right, well, settle in, folks. So eight cards per pack, 12 packs per box, two auto, two memorabilia cards per box on average. We were talking presidential facial hair. Mike's asking, have there been any candidates even for presidents at facial hair since, since uh, Taft? I don't think so. I don't think so. Like not in like the last 
20 years, right? Not in the ni not in the nineties. I mean, have there even been, been any vice presidents that had facial? I mean, which would who would probably be candidates as well? I don't think so. Biden Harris, no mustaches, no beards. Trump Pence. No mustaches, no beards. Obama, Biden, no mustaches, no beards. Uh, who was it before that? W and... Um, blanking on his name, but no, no beards. No beards in the 90s. No beards in the 80s. Carter, Ford, Nixon, no beards in the 70s. JFK. Yeah, how many, like how many U.S. senators? Yeah, I guess Ted Cruz. Yeah, Ted Cruz, but he's he's Ted Cruz has gone clean shaven too. He's rocking more beard these days, maybe. Hmm. All right, we got Austin Hayes, piece of his jersey, going to Steve and the Orioles. We got Tariq Skubal. It'll be for the Tigers. It's also for Steve. These gold foils, not numbered, so I'm kind of breezing by them. Right, these, these ones aren't numbered either. There's Otto Lopez and Otto Otto for Toronto. Steve. There's a list on, yeah, I just shared that list, Rex. Well, welcome to the show, Rex. Well, no, it says the most recent president to have facial hair was William Howard Taft. Truman brief, briefly go, grew a goatee. No, you're looking at Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter. Uh, they're under the sideburns category. Read the chart, Rex. Beard, mustache, nose. The, I guess Truman raw, like had a beard, mustache at times, maybe for a year. They said 1948, but the last one to fully rock it, William Howard Taft. Come on, Rex.
Matt Manning. Two color dual relic for Detroit. All right, we were talking beard, mustache. They had sideburns. Which I can, yeah, facial hair technically, but. Wow, look at that. Otto Lopez, but nothing on the front. Wander Franco and numbered to 75. All right, first box down, more to go. Now Wander Franco goes to Raymond in the race. What's that? Oh, Nadal's injured? Oh. Australian Open. When they get to go to the back, what is it? They get to Mr. Miyagi or something? So they don't see him private? Is that what? Yeah, well, they, they, they get right? Mr. Miyagi is hiding just back saying, there like, and just slaps his hands together, warms them up, and like they looked at him fixes right now, Rafa. They looked at him on the bench and then... I that. think it's like a privacy thing, like the blue medical tent. Yeah, I think that's kind of what they're, they're doing. Yeah, they, they did that, so. Apparently, social scientists have researched the effect of facial hair on the electability of presidential candidates and currently consider facial hair to have a negative effect on candidates. Today, the existence of facial hair and potential presidential candidates this according to the Wikipedia article, is regularly noted, albeit somewhat jokingly, as a harmful factor. So that's, this Wikipedia article has a whole list of quarterback or quarterbacks of <laughs> Gardner Minshew, of uh, presidents, and there's columns that check with checkboxes: beard, mustache, sideburns. John Quincy Adams was the first... Oh, that should have been a trivia question for you guys. Who was the first president to rock... No, he only rocked sideburns. I'm talking beard or mustache. That really hasn't been a lot. Abraham Lincoln, obviously, had a beard. Ulysses S. Grant, beard. So Lincoln, first president with a proper beard who rocked a beard. We had Quincy Adams, Martin Van Buren, and Zachary Taylor knocking out sideburns. Abraham Lincoln rocking the the uh, the beard, no mustache. Ulysses S. Grant, beard, mustache. Rutherford B. B. Hayes, beard, mustache. James Garfield, beard, mustache. Chester A. Arthur, only mustache. Grover Cleveland, only mustache. Looks like the beard mustache combo was out. Benjamin Harris brought back the beard-mustache combo. Theodore Roosevelt says no beard, just mustache. Taft says no beard, just mustache. Harry S. Truman, I think, was clean cut most of the time, but apparently at some point in his presidency in 1948, he did rock a beard-mustache. Must have been a rough year. Um, or no, maybe that's post-World War II. He just let it go. He's like, I'm good. Um, and that's it for beard-mustaches. And then Ford and Carter apparently rock some sideburns, but no beard, no mustache. Any bald presidents? John Quincy Adams was bald. Martin Van Buren was bald. At least that's what I saw from those pictures. I think maybe in the early years there were bald presidents, but I think as, as time went on, as, uh, as, as we kind of settled into being a country, I think people are like, we just need strong, fully haired men to be president. 55 out of 99, Nick Lodolo. That'll be for Raymond and the Reds.
There's Seiya Suzuki to 99 for the Cubs. It's going to go to Austin. Mike Tower, would you vote for a bald? Unless you're bald. Maybe you're bald. Would you vote for a bald president? If you watch... Uh, if you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, you know what Larry David thinks. Thinks there's some bald bias out there. There's Mike Bowman, two color, dual relic. That'll be for Baltimore. That's gonna go to Steve Birch. We got Seattle's JP Crawford, two color dual relic for Raymond. Got Helio Ramos autograph for the Giants. That's going to be for Steve Birch. Read a long time ago. The reason why all the people of the original Congress and such were wigs was because of syphilis. Hmm, caused him to lose their hair. That I don't know. I don't know. You'll have to fact check Rex on that. But that I don't have any thoughts one way or the other on that. Maybe? Syphilis caused you to lose your hair? Julio Rodriguez going to Raymond. Raymond also has Tampa Bay. The Wander Francos are going to go to you too. I thought wigs were a f just a fashion of the time. I know that, you know, French leadership, 17, 1800s, 1700s definitely, were uh, rock and powdered wigs. You know, uh, I think judges in, the, in England, the United Kingdom, I think they still wear like a form of that kind of old school powdered wig as a tradition. I got John Heasley, Halsey, Hazley, Hazley, John Hazley. Dual relic for the Rangers. That's going to be for uh, Royals. That is different blue team. That's going to be for Steve. Brett Phillips. Rays, that's going to be for Raymond and the Rays. MJ Melendez, Royals, Steve. Reese Hoskins to 35. That's for the Phillies, Raymond.
And we got a Luis Patino. Jersey and autograph for Tampa Bay. Raymond with the Rays. Kyle Tucker, 40 home runs this year? I feel like that's a lot of home runs for Kyle Tucker. How many did he hit last year? Hit 30 last year? Hmm. 40 homers for Kyle Tucker. I guess if he hit 30 last year, that's I guess that maybe that doesn't sound too sound as crazy as as I thought it would be. But 30 is pretty common. Hitting 40 is pretty hard. Trout had 40 last year. Trout had 40 playing only 119 games, which is kind of crazy. Uh, Pete Alonso had 40 last year. Schorber had 46. And obviously, Judge had 62. Those are your only guys uh, with 40 and up in 2022. 2021, only one, two, three, four, five people hit over 40 home runs. A lot of 39s, a lot of 38s. It's a bold prediction, though. How much are you putting on the Kyle Tucker over prop? I don't think it's going to be, I don't know, it'll probably be at... I don't know, home run prop? Probably. Probably 29? 27? Hammer that over, I guess, Stephen Punk, if you believe in that. what's tricky too is that um, is he in a lineup what 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 where, where is he usually hitting you know is it a spot where you know he gets more opportunities to hit those home runs are they asked do they do they want him to want him to hit that many home runs or do they just want him to I guess he's only a 250 hitter, so maybe he is more of a power guy. Here's a Bobby Witt Jr., different foil on the front for Steve Birch and the Royals. And here's a Julio Rodriguez for Raymond and the Mariners. We got an Alejo Lopez for Cincinnati. That's for Raymond. Pablo Lopez. No reason for him to be filled. Maybe that was a variation. I don't know. All card chip. Joe Adele. Autograph. Who do I pull? Alejo Lopez. Probably just signs a lot. Joe Adele, wouldn't that, I don't know. Is he is he in is he in bust zone now? Rysel Iglesias, dual relic for the Angels. 
Bailamos, let the rhythm take you over, Bailamos. I got Jorge Polanco, Peak Relic, Minnesota, Steve Birch. All right, another box down. Another box to go. What, uh, what, what do you think Aaron Judge does this year, ladies and gentlemen? Ridiculous season. So he hit for the regular season 100, 570 at bats, hit 311, 62 home runs, 131 RBIs, 16 stolen bases while, while you're at it. He says he wants the Barry Bond home run. Did he really say that? No, he didn't. You're, you're pulling my leg. You're putting me on, Stephen Punk. He's a little ways from that. Oh, he wants the single season. Oh, I got it. Okay, okay. That makes more sense. Wow. That's quite a that's quite a goal. If he if he really said that. I have a I, I, I have a feeling he wouldn't really actually outright say that though. Now I'm looking it up. It, Well, I think back in September, he says, you know, 73 is the record, he's saying, in my book. No matter what people say about that era for me, they went out there, hit 73, 70 home runs. To me, that's what the record is. The AL record, 61. So that's the one I can try to go after. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's been a fun year so far. It's Kevin Smith, Steve Birch with the Oakland A's. Got a fact check sometimes. Say Suzuki. 12 out of 25. Cubs, Austin. The Cubbies. John Gray, New Age Materials. Dual Relic for it, Steve Birch and the Rangers.
I wouldn't be surprised if Aaron Judge never hits 50 homers ever again in his career. Bobby Wood Jr. gold foil. Let alone another 60 season. Let alone a 70 season. Well, I guess if he does it, he'd have to do it within... I feel like he'd have to do it in the next two or three seasons. I mean, those are those are those are special years, you know. It's it's. I mean, Aaron Judge makes it look easy, but it's not a, it's not an easy feat. There's Jake Berger, dual relic. Oh, that's a good question. What did Barry Bonds hit the next year after he broke the single season record? Okay, that's a that's a good that's a good line of thinking there. Stephen. All right. According to BaseballReference.com, the year before he hit 73, he hit 49 home runs. Then he hit 73. Then the year after that, 46, 45, 45, 5 in an injury shortened season, 26 and 28 before he hung him up. Before 73, the highest he's ever had was 46 home runs. Well, no, that 40, that was 49 home runs the year before. Good trivia. Rex is saying, do you know that in Don Manning's entire career, he only had one season where he hit a grand slam, and in that season he had six. Guess the year. I'd say 1989. Stephen Punk guessing 1986. So what year was it? We're close, apparently. Another one to start rattling off years. Matt Manning, two-color dual relic. Steve Birch and the Tigers, 87. Six Grand Slams in one season. And that's most by a player in a single season. Or at the time, most by any player in a single season. Aaron Ashby, 33 out of 99. I kind of like the design of these Summit autos here. Sort of like the mountain in the background. Maybe like a, it's like a moon setting in the background or something like that. It looks pretty cool. Milwaukee, that's for Raymond. MJ Melendez to 75. Did the Yankees make the playoffs in 87? That was the year the Twins, I think, won the World Series. I don't remember who else was in that playoffs. Playoffs? Oh, 
Got Josh Lowe. Rays, that's going to be for Ray. Ray with the Rays. Julio Rodriguez, also for Ray. Junior. I don't know if I don't know if Rex has that info handy. In nineteen eighty seven they finished fourth in the AL East. Did not make the playoffs. All right, two boxes to go. Did he not make the playoffs any time with the Yankees? No, one year. There's only one lonely line in his postseason batting stats area. 1995, his age 34 season where they lost to the uh, Mariners. Played five games in the ALDS. Hit 417, homer, six RBIs, four doubles. But uh, that was the uh, that was the double by Edgar Martinez. What was that what was that year? Bottom of the eleventh, Jack McDowell facing the two three four hitters. Joey Cora hits a weak bunt. Down the first base line, singles. Ken Griffey Jr. Ground ball with eyes. Joey Cora goes to third. And then Edgar Martinez rips the double down the left field line, scoring Alex Cora, Joey Cora, that is, scoring Ken Griffey Jr. And the Mariners win. Huge moment. You know, Teddy Jaspi would know that. Does Wade Boggs have a World Series ring? Yes. He must. Did, didn't he get one with the Yankees at one of those Yankees teams? There's uh, Michael Taylor for Kansas City. Luis Urias to 99. 
That's a pretty good one, Rex. There's Zach McKinstry. Well, he didn't win one with the Red Sox. If he won one at all. Yeah, you're right. It, he won. He got a World Series ring in '96 with the Yankees. Zach McKintry goes to Raymond and the Dodgers. Is this a case hit? I feel like I've not. This is the first time I'm seeing a blue steel card here. Goes to Austin and the Cubs. Maybe it's a short print. Don't know, but looks pretty cool, actually. Steel look in the background is really neat. Yeah, he turned into a Yankee in 93. Shea Langliers for the A's. That'll be for Steve Birch. Craig Biggio, Astros, Austin with the Astros. All right, here's another Julio Rodriguez. Last box, we made it. I'll do a little recap after this last box too. Oh yeah, for you. The Cubs game winner was the best World Series game win. The Luis Gonzalez ones. Remember how that was like post 9/11? Nobody wanted, nobody wanted the Diamondbacks to win the World Series. Maybe the one time in history where 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 everyone was rooting for the Yankees, like the even neutrals and rivals rooting for the Yankees. Oh, that's a good question. It had to be the Yankees, right? Marlins against the Yankees in 97. I used to know, like, all the World Series winners from, like, the 60s through, like, early 2000s. But I ran out of hard drive space in my brain, and I had to... Uh, that's that's some of the information that had to get put into the recycle bin. All right, final box. At long last, we made it. There's Ronzi Contreras, two out of ten. For the Pirates, Steve Birch. Oh, I need more 55 top loaders. No, we're almost there. Matt Brash, 38 out of 50. It's for Seattle. That's going to go to Raymond. 
Another Bobby Witt Jr. for the Royals. Had to go to Steve Birch. Cal Ripken, Relic. Nice. A little stripe in there as well. That's going to go to Steve and the Orioles. More Bobby Witt Jr. Stephen Punk thinks this guy, 40 home runs. Alec Bohm. Two color, dual relic for the Phillies. That's going to go to Raymond. Got a Gavin Sheets to 49. And the last little bit here. India, Yepes, and Luis Robert. Done. Thanks, everybody, for watching, for getting in on this break. Quick little recap here. This is Random Team 3, half case, fresh case. Second half of the case in the store now, jazbeescasebreaks.com. A lot of hits, a lot of relics, a lot of autographs, a lot of Bobby Wood Jr., Nicea Suzuki. Julio Rodriguez's relics, Wander's, numbered Wander, Otto Lopez, Tariq Skubal, and Austin Hayes to start things off at the beginning of the break. There you go, gang. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.